I, I scored this beauty out of Bolt Trash. If you don't know what Bolt Trash is, once a month here where we're located, you can put out everything you want to get rid of at the curb and the city comes around and picks it up. The rest of the month you can only put trash cans out. This is one of the items we found. It's got a couple of little drawers that are messed up. It's got some bad spots in it, but all in all, it's pretty solid. Should be an easy fix. Now, as soon as I saw this piece, I immediately knew what I wanted to do with it. I want to do another apothecary, apothecary, apothecary <laughs> with it because, because man, the last couple I've done have sold super fast, got a lot of attention and brought in really good money. So as soon as I seen this piece and as square as it is, I thought it'd be a good candidate for doing a apothecary. Why do y'all watch me? <laughs> All right, let's get to work. This one is split. It's a really odd size track, so I don't think I'll be able to order one. I've got a bunch hoarded, but I don't think I have that size. So we may take this one out and just see if we can't glue it back together and then flip it around the opposite way so the split end will be on the back where the drawer really doesn't touch. Yeah, they all look like they're split. Oh yeah, y'all seen how we've got four or five of them that are split. We're just gonna take them all out, get some really good glue in there, glue them all up, flip them around backwards so the split ends are on the back side. so hopefully they never split again. And it should be all good. So we've got what you would typically normally see on newer dressers. You got a mixture of particle board, that's actually cardboard, and this is MDF, the sidewalls. So we're gonna be very careful with sanding that because if you can see that, see how that has a wood grain? or it looks like wood grain, and that looks like cardboard, that's MDF. So we're gonna be very careful when we stand these sides. The tops probably are the same thing. We probably got real wood on the outside, and then this is probably a veneer right here. So we're gonna be very delicate with saying in this section, these will be all right. I bet you this is real wood, this is real wood, this is real wood. It's just the big sections, the expensive sections are what they use the cheaper laminate stuff on. Either I missed some screws or it's got some serious glue. Just some serious glue. That's a good piece of wood. We'll hang on to that. So my original plan was to cut it right here, but since this doesn't go all the way out, you can see the particle board there. I'm not gonna mess with trying to cover that up, so we're just gonna cut it right at where the trim was. So I picked these up at Hobby Lobby. I found that they're cheaper at Hobby Lobby than they are on Amazon. I got several different sizes in here. I think I'm gonna use the smaller ones, but where I added all this wood trim, I'm gonna make it look like metal. And then I'm gonna put these in there and paint them to look like metal rivets. Should be pretty cool. Now in order to get them perfectly spaced, I'm gonna use one of these cheap little drawer pull tools that I have here. These are what sometimes are given to you with handles. I don't ever use them for that. Everything's bigger in Texas. If I'm using clear coat, something that's real thin and I've got the pressure cranked up real high, you'll see me put on a mask. But the rest of the time, I've got the pressure turned down low, the volume turned down low. It's not like a paint gun you would use with a compressor where it's blowing a ton of air through it and it's just misting everything into the air. As y'all see, my background doesn't have a bunch of overspray on it. If I was using a regular paint gun, you'd see overspray on everything. That's the great thing about this thing. It's not gonna blow a bunch of crap into the air. It's glorified just spitting paint out onto the furniture. When I get done painting, you'll see there's not a bunch of black paint on the wall behind it. There's not a bunch of black paint on the floor or on the table. Now again, if I crank the pressure up real high and I've got something thinner, yeah, I'll put a mask on because I can see it immediately when it starts misting stuff into there. But normally you'll see when I'm using it, it's not, it's just spitting paint onto the furniture. Now that's not me saying, hey, don't wear a mask. If Wear a mask if you feel comfortable doing it. 
I absolutely hate it, especially when it's hot and sweaty out here and it's just get claustrophobic. So if I don't have to, I'm not going to. But by all means, wear a mask if you're gonna use this. I'll say, Dean told me not I don't have to wear a mask using it. No, you wear a mask. <laughs> I'm just explaining why I don't. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and put another heavier coat on. Now while this is still wet, I'm gonna take some metallic paint and kind of just dust it from far away to give it a little bit of a metal sheen. Let me use some hammered pewter. All right, I'm gonna let that dry overnight and then we'll come out here in the morning and start adding all of our little detailed touches to it. All right, now we're doing what's called dry brushing. I like to use spray paint. I like the metallics I can get in the spray paint and they dry almost instantly. So it makes the dry brushing work really well. Now it's just like it sounds. You're gonna take your brush. You don't want it wet. Kind of do that, let it get dry. And then you're just gonna drag it over the high spots. What it's gonna do is highlight the high spots and make it look like shiny metal shining through the old metal like where the edges got hit or touched. And you can do some random spots right down the middle. And then we're gonna really hit these. Now I may come back through after doing a little bit of shadowing next and do this again, but we're gonna go ahead and get the color down on there. The first go, you don't want a bunch of paint. You wanna keep your brush pretty much dry. So if you want it to be shinier, just keep going back over it and let it build up just like that. Isn't that cool? It starts making it look like real metal. And you can do this process with any color you want. A lot of times I use aluminum just to get this real shiny color. Sometimes I'll use copper or even gold. So it looks like the piece that's underneath is actually like a brass or a copper that's shining through. All right, I'm gonna go through and dry brush this entire piece and then I'm gonna come back through with my airbrush here in a second. And we're gonna add a little bit of grimy, gritty shading to it and probably add some rust as well. All right, now I'm just gonna take my airbrush. It has water-based transparent black in it. Just add a little bit of shading. I said just start with a little bit and work your way up. Now I'm gonna go through and add a little more character. So say water would have set on here the way it would have ran down and left grime on here. I'm gonna add that in and then later on we'll come back and put a little bit of rust on top of it to bring it to life. Now, before I'm done, I'll probably come back through and just dry brush over the top of these tips just to really give it some 3D depth. Now, I'm just going to back my airbrush way up and kind of blend it in so we don't have a really dark spot. There you go. I'm going to go around and do the entire piece, and then I'll come back through and start adding a little bit of rust color to those. Now, we're going to add a little bit of rust to add some aging to it. This is red oxide, and I got this cool little template. We can add some rust spots. All right, there it is. You can see as it starts drying, it really looks like rust. We can also come back through and add a little bit of black spots into the center of those, and it really brings it to life. Now we're just going to add a little bit of rust to the bottom of these rivets, like water had been running down them. Just remember, less is more. And random's always better. All right, there you go. That's how you add rust to it. Now the very last step before I clear coat it, I'm gonna come back through and add a little bit more dry brushing to the top of these, just really make them pop. Then I'll add some black spots to the center of these real dark rust spots and that'll really bring it to life. There you go. I don't know if y'all can hear that. We have a little bit of a texture. So before I put another coat, I'm gonna take some 800 grit and wet sand it. This is just water with just a tiny dab of Dawn dish soap in it. Just try to make sure you're going with the wood grain. You'll see right here, the wood grain goes a different direction. So I hit it that way. And then I'll follow the wood grain this way. 
And you'll see me, I just use my fingertips to fill it because your eye can't always see it. All right, let's do another coat. Man, look how cool that looks. All right, I'm gonna take that inside so it doesn't get messed up and then we're gonna start working on the drawers. Unfortunately, the steel wheels are delayed, so they're not gonna be here for a couple days, but we're gonna get as much accomplished as we can. All right, now we're gonna take the front of the drawers and put grooves in them to make it look like a bunch of little drawers, like an apothecary, uh, apothecary. God, I hate that word, <laughs> apothecary cabinet. Now, what I'm gonna do is I've got a bit that's just a little bit wider than this groove because we want them all to match. I just got my battery operated Makita router. This thing's not as strong as one of the big plug-in ones, but it's not as aggressive as the big ones. Some of those can be hard to control and one little slip and your piece is messed up. This is a lot easier to control. We're not having to router a bunch of material away, so it's not gonna have to work real hard. So this should work great for what we're doing. We'll have to figure out some way to put a track on here to be a guide. Um, I have a guide for this piece. We'll see if it's long enough to reach to the outside. If it is, we'll use that. If not, we'll put down a board or something to guide it along there. Now to get my initial depth, I want it to be identical to what's already in these drawers just to make it less work. So I'm just going to have it sit down in there. I'll do a sit just like so and lock it in place now we have the exact same depth got my little guide that came with my router here it just goes in right back here so you just tighten it up and you can loosen this one and it slides back and forth it's got two different holes here so we can get it out a little bit further we've got it in this hole and it'll only go this far out we need it to go a little bit further so we'll just take this piece out put it in this hole right here should go even further now we just set it down the original track we can get it perfectly lined up. So, all right, cross your fingers. There we go. I'm gonna go through all the drawers, do that, and then we'll come back through and figure out where we wanna put our line across this way so it'll look like it has four small drawers. All right, since we have so many different random size drawers, I'm gonna do different random size small drawers for the apothecary thing. Apothecary. Uh -huh. So this one, I want it to look like it has three drawers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the measurement of this and divide it by three, and that'll give us where we need to split. 29 and three quarters. So the center of this is one and a quarter away from the outside. So if I just take a measurement one and a quarter out and put a board there, I should just be able to cut straight down. One and three quarters. Three quarters. Now all I gotta do is take and clamp down a board right there on my line, and then I'll have a guide for my router. Now we have three drawers. Hey guys, I wanted to introduce you to Bishop. He's a little eight-week-old boxer pup that was picked up as a stray. Unfortunately, right now, all the fosters for Apollo are completely booked up, and as y'all know, the facility is overpacked right now. This little guy didn't have anywhere to go, so I volunteered to foster him until one opens up. He's being very sweet right now. But he is a boxer, so he does have his playful moments, and he loves playing with the big dogs. Yep. Yeah. 
Y'all wouldn't believe how amazing Colossus has been with this guy. I'll post up some pictures here. All the Mastiffs have been just loving and sweet and playful with him, but especially Colossus. I still can't believe that people would just abandon a six to eight week old puppy. I mean, what could this puppy do that would justify, you know, putting him on the side of the road? Especially this guy, he's sweet and he needs a little bit of potty training, but is that justified dropping a dog off on the side of the street? And they've had a 10 day hold on him and nobody's came in to claim him. Don't understand people sometimes. Let's go outside. You wanna go outside? You wanna go outside? Huh, you wanna go outside? Come on, let's go outside. <laughs> 